Hello everyone, this is Moses from Wilderness Cave, and we are going to continue once again with our little friend here, Hackleswell, that is on a journey to fulfill his daughter's quest. Let's begin. If you would like to support the channel and gain access to my game, Haiku Journey, a solo journaling game, which is an enchanting solo journaling game that blends the art of haiku with rich storytelling, transporting players from magical fantasy realms to the vast expanse of outer space and beyond. Please consider becoming a Patreon member today. Thank you for your support. And here we are once again with the adventure of Hackle's Will using Dragon Bane system, which is my number one favorite solo RPG system. It's also for group, but I only play solo. So let's recap very quickly on the journal, the Dragon Bane journal of mine. Uh, I wrote down a few questions after the end of the episode. By the way, if you haven't watched the previous episode or the series, I'll just link it up, uh, series uh, episode one now, so you can watch that. But regardless, so we found out the sword is a detriment. There's a curse on the sword. We don't know what the curse is, so what is the curse? And how is a curse going to affect Hackleswell? I don't know if that effect is spelled right, an A or an E. I always forget. <laughs> So Hackleswell does know that there is a spirit of a gnome mage, which I did a drawing of. This will be in the dragon sign. There's the gnome mage right there finished up. This little one, this little guy took me a long time to draw, a lot longer than I thought. But that gnome mage is a curse. So I'm not too sure of everything that's going on with it. Now what we can do simply is just roll on the inspiration table. This is the solo book adventure that you get with Dragon Bane. There's your fortune chart. But we could just roll and just kind of think of something. But that's, you know, that, that means that I'm going to find out and not hackles well. And I kind of want to find out what the detriment is in the most opportune moment or cinematic moment. So we ended the last episode on an evening worth of events, and he went up the river during the night, and now it's nighttime. Let me flip the new page. Always date your journal. Uh, now it's nighttime, almost sunrise. So you can see the sun's coming in. And there's Hacklewell, Hackleswell on the boat. Let me show you on the map where he's at right now. So here's the map of the Misty Vale. This comes in the Dragon Bane box set. Uh, Hackles will start out in outskirt. Now he is all the way over here. Right around here. So you see a dilapidated house, a stone bridge. Uh, 50 kilom 15 kilometers can be done in a, an entire shift. So six hours hike for 15 kilometers. He is on a, a boat right over here, as you can see. He's on a boat. So I pushed him a little bit further because of the boat. He is going upstream though. But I pushed them a little bit further, and that's and then I pushed the daytime a little bit, or the the day cycle. So it's a little, it's it's sunrise. So here's the the dilapidated house and the stone bridge and the river, and there is Hackleswell. So Hackleswell is going upriver this direction, and I'm not too sure what else is going to happen after that. That's the joy of solo role playing. I have no idea what's going to happen. I even thought about it for a while, and I said, you know, I'm not going to do anything. Maybe I'll roll in the inspiration. Or we could just roll to see if he needs to stop and eat or something. I think that's the best thing to do. He's, in a, he's going to dock his boat somewhere around here. Let's move him over. So I decided to dock the boat on this side of the river. I don't want to deal with anything that's going on over here. Maybe there's something in this dilapidated house or building. I don't want to deal with that. So he's on this side. Um, and he's just resting right now. Maybe he put a campfire on. Something like that. Let's see. Let me let me see some type of role I can do to progress the story forward. So Hackles Will docks his boat near a stone bridge and a broken down stone house. That's where he is now. Let's see any uh, let's see any skills he can do right now. Let me look this over. Let me ask the fortune chart to see if there's anyone here, anyone that he can speak to, or any type of. Um, person that that is not like let's say a creature or a monster just any type of person that's here now is the person going to be hostile or friendly i don't know but let's see let's roll on the fortune chart right now so six extreme yes one extreme no let's get a 1d6 nice and organized 
Let's go. So we'll find out. A three. No, there is no one here. But it's not an extreme no, but there's no one here. Okay, so he is alone. He is alone for the time being. So let's see what that's all about right now. Now, long ago, I created a hunting and fishing rules for Dragon Bane because uh, I just thought the rules were really mundane and boring. Now it's version 1.3. So let me use the rules here and let's have Hackles will fish. Let's see what he, let's see what happens. First, let's do the hunting and fishing skill, which is a 10. So a 10 or less, and he successfully catches a fish. Let's do that first. So D20. Let's see. Come on. Just sits out next to the river. And he does have a fishing line and hook, by the way. So he sits out in the river, casts, and 10 right on the money. Okay, now that's basically it. And there's a little bit more to it for fishing and hunting, but I went a little further. Now you go to the random table and see what type of fish it was. And there's also um, ocean, like fishing in the sea, work in progress. And now, and the random size, let's see. Let's see what he gets. Now this is a price per pound and there's also, also if the bigger the fish, the more uh, food rations you get. So let's see what type of fish. It's a D8 roll. So I got my D8, let's see. The three. It is a, <laughs> a common carp. It's worth two silver. So he, he's not trying to sell it right now, but you know, he wants to, now what's the next one? D6. So D6, now the size of the fish. Now here it is right here. Let's see. Let's see what the size of this carp is. The three. Average fish, as stated, D4 food ration. So it's just like basically like the rules of the book. So now I get to write down on my on my inventory, he got a carp at a D4 food rations. Okay, well, there we go. So I was gonna put the carp in my inventory list, but my encumbrance is a seven. So if I go to eight, he's gonna be encumbered. So and then there's all these negative effects for that. So I'm gonna say that I forgot to write down um, or write off that he ate food that was given to, to him by Olgrid's wife in the farmhouse, in their farmhouse. So this went down, it should have went down to two from six. So this four of a fish just put me back up to six. So I just want to keep it like that. All right, well now he, he's fed and he has uh, fish rations now. That's good. And he loves fish. If you guys remember from, what was it, episode one? Well, he loves, he loves crispy cooked fish. That's it, crispy cooked fish. Now as Hackleswell is relaxing and enjoying his fish, he looks up and let's see, it's gonna be with a roll of spot hidden, but I'm gonna make something interesting. Um, Cause what's life without being an interesting life? There's something fluttering. Like you see how there's uh, open doors or windows. On the other side there is as well, but one's broken. And you can see something fluttering inside. Maybe it's a cloth. Maybe it was somebody walking. I don't know. But he, he thinks he sees somebody or something. Let's roll on the spot hidden. Uh, spot hidden right here, 14 or less, if he notices that movement. Now he saw something, but maybe he was like, you know, did, did, did he think he saw something, which would be a 14, uh, 15 or above, or was it like, nope, that's something, I saw something, 14 or below, let's see right now. So yes, six, so he definitely saw something moving in that, House. Um, okay, if I was Hackleswell, I don't, I already dealt with a ghost. I don't want to deal with any of this. I'm getting old, tired. My goal is just to get up the river and go to the waterfall. Uh, when I rolled for hunting and fishing, agility is marked as a day's condition, which is a basically at a disadvantage. Rolling 2d20, take the highest, but I forgot to erase it before I started filming. The day's, con the day's condition is gone. It's been too long. Whatever days he has been because of the uh, sleeping poisons is worn off by now. Okay, I'm gonna have Hackleswell not go all the way, but he's gonna go on top of the bridge. 
to see if he could see better in that building. Now, he already passed his spot hidden, so he knows there's something there. Because he moved to that higher location, he could definitely see what's in that building or what's in this dilapidated house or what have you. Let's, let's call it a house that was next to the river. He could definitely see what is in there, what was moving. He saw it because of the advantage of being on top of a stone bridge. But what did he see? Let's go to the inspiration table. We get a D20. Nine. Hunt destroyed history. That kind of, that's fitting. Let's see another one. 17. Stop protected resource. Hunt destroyed history. Maybe he saw a history of thing. Resource protected. Stop. So I spent about three minutes. I'm looking at the timer on the the recording of the phone, um, but I obviously I edited it to make it faster. There is, what he sees is hunt resource. There is a tarp covering the opening of this house that's swaying back and forth. And when he, that's what he saw moving. And when he went up to the bridge and looked downwards, he could look on the floor and sees a bow hunting resource. He sees a bow on the floor. But is the bow now? He only has, what is it now? Uh, bow, five. I mean, he's horrible at any of the weapon skills except for staffs. So um, he knows he's horrible at bows. He doesn't, but he knows that it might come in handy. But just because there's a bow in there doesn't mean there's nothing else. So if Hackleswell goes into this building to get that bow, maybe he can reach in like through the window and grab it. But is something going to grab his arm? That's what he's thinking. Like he's just too afraid now, especially after seeing a ghost in a dark castle by himself in a flooded dungeon of a castle, let alone a regular castle, <laughs> a nice one and a dead body. I'm going to let fortune decide. I'm going to act like I'm watching a movie. I am not going to sway. Oh, I could sway. I could tilt it. Huh? I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about the fortune chart. I could tilt it a certain way. Well, I think, you know, personally, he's been watching. He's been, he's been there for a few minutes and he's still looking through the window. He doesn't see anything. He's like, is anything there? He, maybe, maybe he threw some rocks. <clears throat> He threw some rocks at the at this house, threw the rocks to, inside the building, see if anything would move. And he didn't see anything at all. And now the sun is coming up a little bit more and more light is getting into the house. And he really doesn't see anything at all. He's throwing rocks, like I said, trying to make a commotion in that house to see if anything will move. He doesn't see anything move. And he knows that a bow could help him later on, especially after what he went through. You know, if he could have, he had rather shoot a bow at something than try to go up near it again, like that ghost. But, you know, a bow won't hurt a ghost. Only magical effects and I think fire and something else purging will affect a ghost in this, in this rule set. Anyways, I'm going to let fate decide, but I'm going to tilt yes. Let's get a 2d6. The highest number is what's going to be. So I'm saying that he is probably going to do it. So 2d6, highest number. Here we go. Six. So he's like, he basically goes, a bow. Oh my God, I need that. It just runs without even thinking. Now that six, let me zoom in on it. That six may be a detriment right now. You could say, all right, hackles well, a six. You know, this extreme, just because you're rolling a fortune chart or an oracle that you've made up yourself and it rolled an extreme on something, even though it's an extreme yes, doesn't mean it's good. That means that he... If it wasn't an extreme yes, I would have had him roll for, uh, let's say, awareness or spot hidden, which he has 14s on, which is really good to see if there's anything in this house. He just ran up there and stuck his arm through the window to get, to get the bow without thinking, without saying, you know what, I should check again while I'm closer to this house. And he didn't. 
and let's see how that's going to affect him. And we're going to do that with a die roll. And because of the extreme yes, I'm going to do another extreme uh, uh, tilt for uh, the highest, the highest being the uh, the one we keep. And the question is, is there anything in that building? Anything other than the bow? Like, is there any, um, is there any person, animal, creature, even monster, whatever? I'm not too sure, but is there anything other than the bow? High, we keep the highest number. Here we go. Three. No, you're lucky. Is it two and three? Yep, you're lucky. You're lucky, Hackles. Well, okay, so he just gets the bow. It's not an extreme no, so like spider whips fall on his hand and the spider crawls up his arm. He's like, ah, oh, oh, it's just a little spider, not a big one. Would have been a big spider, a monster, if you, uh, if that was a six, Hackles. Well, so enough with that. He gets the bow. Now I got to put a bow in his inventory. And he, which, which I wonder if that, well, I think the inventory doesn't matter with weapons. It goes into the weapons area. So it doesn't go into inventory for encumbrance. It goes here. So he'll have a bow here. And there's a spirit sword. If you guys remember the spirit sword from the last episode. Okay. So I'll put a bow here later on. Okay. Now he goes back on his boat and says, the heck with this. Let's get out of here and goes up the river. So like I said, Hackle's Will was here at this bridge. Let me zoom in. And this dilapidated house. And then he moved up the river uh, 15 kilometers for an entire shift, which is about six hours of hiking. But he moved up the river and now it is, let me see, it was night going into morning, sunrise. So now it's day. Right now it's daytime. Now he's in about 15 kilometers is right around here. Let me move this out of the way. Put Hackle's Well right around here. Now he's right above the river word right here. That's where he is. That's where the boat is. Now, there's interesting things in Mirror Lake, but it looks a little too far. And all of a sudden, I, when I was looking at this map, I see this little well, water well, and I'm like, what is that? Like many, many people might just pass by and go whatever. But for me, that's interesting. Now I try to look up lore in the book or anything. There's a few things that tell you certain places what they are. I don't think I found anything for that well. Why is there a well here in the middle of nowhere? I don't see any houses here. You would think there'll be wells around uh, outskirt where there's populace or uh, uh, population. Not here. So I think Hackle's well, or not I think, he is. I want to go. He is going to dock his boat right over here. Come on, come on, come on. He's going to dock his boat. Boat's going the wrong way, Hackle's well. <laughs> now it's upside down. Uh, Hackle's well is going to go to that water well. And now he went up the river and went to that water well. So his boat is docked somewhere out here on the river, the river out there. And he's right over here. He's looking at this water well and he's saying to himself, well, one, it's fresh, clean water. So he sees that and he's probably going to want to top off his, uh, you know, his skin, water skin or whatever he has or just drink it directly. But what is the significance of this water well? Why is it here? You know, is it special? Uh, I have no idea. And I really want to roll on the inspiration table. So let's do that now. Let's get the D6s out of here. Organize them. And let's get the uh, D20. Here we go. Let's put it a little closer. Uh, let's go. That's a one. Avenge, ancient barrier. Okay, ancient. So it's an ancient water well. Let's do it again. 19. Summon, transform, treasure. Treasure. Man, Hackles, well, you keep on finding stuff. A spirit sword. You got an enchanted blanket from a friend. Uh, what else did he get? A whole bunch of other stuff. Your, your, your uh, wooden sunflower your daughter made you as a gift now has a, her voice in it for your intuition. Uh, uh, uh abilities. God. And now there's treasure. You see something shiny again. And you saw something shiny in the last time you saw water. So, so an ancient or, or does this mean I was thinking, I was thinking ancient, meaning the water well is ancient. What's ancient is the treasure. 
The treasure is ancient. Interesting. Okay. Finally, I got to use these cards. Now, these card decks here, I got at Five Below. Dump, and it's only a dollar each. I threw away the cards. They're horrible anyways. And I just put in the treasure and the other set of cards, like initiative cards and other things like that, in that one. So now we got the treasure cards. Let me shuffle them up. Off camera, because I'm holding, obviously. There's no tripod. <laughs> uh, let me shuffle them up, and let's see what type of treasure there is. And hopefully there's no complication, like some kind of eel or electric eel or whatever. Um... Or anything else, I don't know. But let's see what's in this uh, this water well. Isn't that cool how this ended up like that? Oh, I love this stuff. Okay, I shuffle the deck now. Now, so it is transparent, or so you can believe me, because I could have put what I wanted on the top deck. I am going to cut, I am going to cut uh, randomly. I'm gonna cut. So I don't know what this is now. Here we go, this is what, watch, it's a rusted nail. Um, Let's see what treasure is in the bottom. Well, not the bottom. I don't know how far. Ah, regardless, whatever it is, he's a duck. He could swim and get anything, okay? Without even rolling for it. He just, it's easy for him, okay? And he has a benefit to swimming, by the way. Like, uh, he has a boon to swimming. So let's just say he successfully did it. It's just a little well. Here we go. <laughs> a rat. He found a rat. Okay, well, okay, fine, he found a rat. Okay, there's a rat there. That's not the treasure. That's not the treasure, there's a rat. That's the complication. And then I'm gonna pull treasure again. So there's a rat, let's roll evade. Let's roll evade, if he doesn't, he gets D4 damage. Here we go. So there was a rat on top of the treasure. <laughs> or, or around the edge of the, the rim. That was, there's still something shiny, because I said there's something shiny. Um, so there's a rat there. All right, now let's see, let's roll evade, which is a, he has a 10 on, so uh, 10 or less and he evades. If he doesn't, it's D4 damage. Okay, he evades it. He got an eight. So it would have been a D4, rolling D4 damage. So armor has no effect, that makes sense. So he'll bite open skin, I guess. Okay, so the rat's out of the way, just scurries along and he's like, ah, dirty rat. And let's see, <laughs> let's see. Let me cut again. Let's see. Let's see what he finds now. Watch another rat. Come on, come on. Here we go. Hey, D6 gold coins. There we go. But it's ancient treasure though. So let me roll a D6. So D6 worth of gold coins. One. Okay, so there's one shiny coin. That makes it interesting. Now for me, there's one shiny gold coin that he got, which is good. Money's always good. But why is that ancient treasure? Why is one gold coin ancient treasure? Let's go to the inspiration table. 16. Seize peaceful refuge. 14. Scavenge mighty person. Okay, bear with me, everyone, please. He has a necklace that Olgrit, his friend, enchanted with his daughter's voice that he uses intuition with. So when he rolls intuition, it glows blue and he hears his daughter's voice speak as his intuition in his head, but it's not in his head, it's through that wooden sunflower glowing blue and his daughter's voice speaks to him through that, okay? Then he has a sword that has a spirit inside. Daughter, spirit in the wooden sunflower, sword. Um, I'll put this in the description, by the way, if you wanna download this for your game. A sword that has a gnome's mage or a, a, a mage gnome inside of it, okay, right there. And now he has a peaceful person inside of this gold coin, one gold coin. So there is a person in this gold coin. Like let's say there's, you know, like, you know, George Washington or Abraham Lincoln, the pennies and all that. 
Let's say that there's a, the, a face, the profile basically, or the side profile of someone on that gold coin, on this gold coin that can, is animated. So he looks at the gold coin. He looks at the gold coin, goes, wow, and starts rubbing it off, you know, all the moss, whatever. And he could hear, <laughs> here we go. Bear with me, everybody. He could hear, ah, oh, what, what are you doing? And he's like, what are you, is this, and he's rubbing his eyes with his other hand. Is, is this gold coin? Maybe he's thinking, maybe the rat did bit, bit me and I'm, uh, I have a disease now and I'm, I'm hallucinating. And the, the, the coin goes, why are you moving his head, looking at Hackleswell, saying, why are you rubbing my face? I'm clean enough. And Hackleswell looks at the coin and goes, are you real? Or, or am I dreaming this? No, I am real. And he explains who he is. I don't know of anything. I'm doing this on the spot, everybody. He explained who, he's, who he is. He was a gentleman of the surrounding area here. And, okay, I'm going to just play with it. A, a witch. A witch tortured him long ago. Remember, ancient treasure. Ancient. Long ago. And put his spirit and his, basically his body and everything. Kind of like a genie almost. But not a genie. There's no wishes. Maybe there is. I don't know. <laughs> hey, he already rubbed it. Maybe he gets some wishes right now. Wait a minute. He rubbed. Oh, my God. I need to slow down, Moses. You're getting really off the ball here. He rubbed the coin, and the coin activated. Sort of like rubbing a lamp. <laughs> so now, it's a genie of the coin. <laughs> he is a genie. <laughs> I had to stop filming, but I'm still laughing. <laughs> I, think, I think that's enough for today's episode. That's so, oh, I don't even remember how to end an episode. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to write something down. <laughs> All right, well, okay, well, Hackles, well, what an adventure this is so far. <laughs> I'll work out, maybe I'll, I'll do, this is a, a, a homebrew thing I made. So I'll do for a spirit, <laughs> in, in, enchanted sword. Now I'm going to make a genie enchanted coin, okay? <laughs> and I'll, I'll, if I, I'll, Hopefully it'll be in the description. Hopefully I'll be done with it. So you can basically use this and a genie enchanted coin or a genie, a genie inside of your games. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, happy gaming, everybody. Bye.